Good morning, dear friends, and a warm welcome to this morning's retreat and adoration as we are going through Holy Week and preparing our hearts for Easter. Let us offer ourselves, let us offer everything that is dear to us. More so, let's offer our souls to Jesus as the Lord has offered himself for us, and that is what we celebrate during this Holy Week, the Lord offering himself. And let us offer our own hearts unto Jesus, ourselves into the presence of the Lord. Let us attach ourselves to the crucified Jesus, experience the love of the cross within our heart. Let us all kneel as we invite Jesus into our midst and pray, O Sacrament Most Holy. Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving be every moment O During this holy week, to be there at the foot of the cross of Jesus, to journey with Jesus to Calvary. There were so many to journey with him during those three years. They saw miracles, they saw signs and wonders. Their stomachs were fed. Their bodies were healed. The excitement was there. They enjoyed everything. There were many to follow the Lord. Even as he entered into Jerusalem, rejoicing, believing that this story will continue. The story of healing, the story of free bread. Believing it will continue, they sang Hosanna. But after that, the whole story changed. Then no one wanted to be around him as he would carry the cross. And then it was rejection. They were unimpressed. They were not stirred in their heart anymore. Rather, they cried, crucify him. Heartlessly, they cried, crucify him. They who experienced his healings, they who got fed by him, they who were touched by him, would cry out, crucify him. That journey to Calvary is not a journey for everyone. That journey to Calvary does not always impress everyone. As we've entered into Holy Week and we are journeying towards Calvary, are we impressed? Are we interested? Or did our interest end? Till the miracles were on, the blessings were there, and once that was completed and the hard part began, our interest faded. We are no more interested. Today, offer ourselves to the Lord as we are journeying towards Calvary with Jesus. There's nothing impressive here. There's no healing here. There's no miracle here. There are no answers to prayer here. 
there there's only the great intensity of Jesus's passion for our souls the extent to which Jesus would go through and put his body through the son of god would be humiliated as the heavens looked on as he portrayed to everyone to earth and to heaven the love that he has for us open our hearts to him be with him and adore this jesus in the blessed sacrament the lord of simplicity the lord of humility when we look at jesus in the blessed sacrament that is all he is weak as a little piece of wafer bread that is how he was on that journey to calvary weak as a fully human person the divine taken up humanity and experiencing the humiliation that comes with it offer our lord as we pray to him o sacrament most holy every moment to calvary was his the whole focus was him on the cross the focus was him everyone else left his side the focus was all him now for the soldiers the focus was only jesus and scourging jesus for the crowd the focus was only jesus and condemning jesus the focus was the lord for everyone but for all the wrong reasons to condemn him to crucify him let our focus be on jesus on this journey to calvary and let it be for all the right reasons understanding what my jesus has done for me understanding the passion of the cross understanding the love that comes forth from the cross understanding the depth and meaning of every drop of blood that was shed on the journey to calvary understanding it celebrating it loving it let us pray to the lord in the blessed sacrament o sacrament most holy o Jesus hallelujah hallelujah lord we glorify you we adore you Jesus hallelujah lord we praise you we worship you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah lord we praise you we glorify you Jesus praise you lord hallelujah 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 Jesus praise you father we praise you son We praise you Holy Spirit of crucified Jesus we praise you we love you Lord glory to you glory to you glory to you glory to you we exalt you Jesus praise you Lord worship you shabaramalaya shara shabaramalaya shantarararia we praise you Jesus we love you Lord we glorify you Praise you Jesus we love you we lift you on high Thank you Jesus 
Hold every prayer of yours dear to your heart now. Every prayer of yours is journeying with Jesus to Calvary. The pain of it, the struggle of it. The Lord holds it with him. Brian Desi Sheldon Punita Lloyd Karen Feel the passion of Jesus. Be one with the passion of Jesus. Do not be afraid of the ordeal that you are going through. You are sharing in Christ's passion. Someone who's had an injury on your elbow and from then you haven't been able to lift things because of the pain that is caused because of the weight the Lord is touching healing. Someone who has been coughing blood the Lord touches. A mother is praying for her son, very young son, who has a speech-related disorder. The Lord touches the child. Someone's praying for your adopted child who shows a lot of signs of disturbances, maybe signs of a very traumatic rejection. Offer it to the Lord, the Lord is touching, blessing that child. Suresh, in your journey you will not be alone. The Lord will journey with you. Do not feel that you have no one. Someone who is praying for the gift of a child but your sperm count is very low. The Lord blesses you. The prayers that the two of you have been offering have been sacred in the Lord's presence. Someone who has tried multiple times to slit your wrist self-harm Feel the love of Jesus flowing into you. Permit the love of Jesus to flow into you. Don't reject it. Permit the love of Jesus to flow into you. Be there at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Whenever we do not feel loved, when we feel rejected by those who we believed would love us and care for us. Be there at the foot of the cross. From the cross, let his blood and his love flow into our lives and into our heart. Never will we be empty when that happens. The human love that we have been seeking has limitations. Seek the love that comes from the cross of Jesus. 
be there at the foot of the cross as you pray from the cross lord let your love flow let it touch my heart let it fill me there's a place where mercy reigns and never dies There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide, where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. there at the foot of the cross from there his love the love that comes through his blood fills our hearts all those empty spaces where we complained that we didn't feel loved where we went searching for love all that empty space the blood of jesus fills us for that is his love when he fills us no more will we crave for love and attention no more will we desire that attention we shall get it from his blood 
his love from the cross mother we pray you intercede for us that we too will be as satisfied as you always were you were so filled with the love of your son intercede and pray that we will always be filled and satisfied with the love from the cross hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen kindly be seated Our friends testify for the glory of God Glennis Bertilla testifies I was having digestive issues for the last month and a half I visited two doctors but even after taking the medications I was not recovering on the 19th of March I was attending the online retreat in the morning and father announced that someone is having problems with digestion and the lord is healing I claimed it immediately for myself the lord has touched and healed me I thank and praise Jesus for his blessings and graces hallelujah 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 Melencia de Silva testifies my mother Matilda de Silva had been suffering from psoriasis for many years she has not she has undergone a lot of medication but nothing seemed to be working she started hearing the daily retreats from August during one of the adorations father mentioned someone suffering from psoriasis is being healed she claimed the healing for herself and since then her psoriasis has been healed and she has not had an episode after that we thank and praise jesus hallelujah 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 adinu noeni from nigeria i started following the divine retreat center colombo's retreats for 2 years now during the pentecost retreat of 2023 i asked the lord to make my brother who resides in Canada to call us because he was annoyed with us and his siblings and he refused to give us a call for over a year during that retreat i prayed i felt the lord giving an answer 3 days after the retreat we received a call from him and he told us that he was not feeling well 12 years ago he did a brain tumor surgery and the tumor was growing again during the retreat of a mother untie of knots i asked the blessed mother to undo the knots and to intercede on his behalf between bef- between the ending of the retreat before the ending of the retreat his doctor asked him to come for a checkup and did some medical tests after the tests the results showed that the tumor tumor is not growing anymore and there is no more need for a second operation the lord touched and healed him hallelujah 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 and this year 2024 beginning of march my granddaughter started having itching and redness and pain in the eyes i took her to a eye clinic she recommended an eye they recommended an eye drop which i bought and was administering to the eyes but the itching and redness and pains just kept persisting on the 13th of march father mentioned a case that there is an allergy and the lord is healing he said the lord will touch and it will clear i claimed it from that moment i noticed that her eyes are clear and she does not have the itching or redness anymore we thank and praise jesus 
the lord has always come through for my family hallelujah 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 dear brothers and sisters as our friends testify for the glory of god let us also be inspired by this reminding ourselves of our responsibility to let others know what jesus is doing for us during these retreats if the lord has touched you during this retreat during these retreats please do testify for the glory of god it is not for your glory it is for the lord's glory we make an effort in typing out that testimony and sending it so that others too especially those who are struggling in their faith will be inspired by what is happening and will believe that their prayers also one day will be answered let us um testify for the glory of god you can send in your testimonies at testimonies.drcc@gmail.com we've been praying during holy week and meditating on the last seven sayings of jesus on the cross today as we pray we pray the words that jesus uttered from the cross when he cried out my god my god why have you forsaken me we read from matthew chapter 27 verse 33 onwards when they came to a place called golgotha they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall but when he tasted it he would not drink it and when they crucified him they divided his clothes amongst themselves by casting lots then they sat down there and kept watch over him over his head they put the charge against him which read this is jesus the king of the jews in the same way the chief priests also along with the scribes and elders were mocking him saying he saved others he cannot save himself he is the king of israel let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him he trusts in god let god deliver him now if he wants to for he said i am god's son the bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way from noon on darkness came over the whole land until 3 in the afternoon and about 3 o'clock jesus cried with a loud voice eli eli lama sabachthani that is my god my god why have you forsaken me one of the last sayings of jesus my god my god why have you forsaken me when we take this just by itself we can just narrow it down to a very um very simple explanation that he is crying to the father and saying why have you forsaken me but there's a deeper meaning to what jesus said over there and it is actually surprising that some of the bystanders didn't pick it up because they did say after that this man is calling for elijah when he said Eli Eli lama sabachthani this man is calling for Elijah they didn't pick it up it is surprising because according to the traditions of the time and even very often um even amongst us now when a prayer is said the person who is leading the prayer says the first few words of the prayer and then the others or the community follow to complete the prayer that is how common prayers are said and in those times that is how the psalms would very often be read where one would begin the psalm and then the others would continue to pray that whole psalm so where does what jesus said come from psalm 22 begins with these words My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But the moment someone makes that says the first statement of the psalm, it means 
the rest of the psalm is meant to be remembered or recited. So Jesus as priest, when he has uttered those words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It doesn't mean that that word, verse is supposed to be taken just by itself, but rather there is a deeper understanding to take the whole psalm and understand what is being said by the, by the psalmist, what is being prayed in that psalm. Because what is being prayed in Psalm 22 is what Jesus is ex experiencing on the cross. It is the completion of the prophecy in Psalm 22. Let's just read some parts of Psalm 22 to understand what Jesus would have meant by it. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Remember the night of Gethsemane. Father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away, but not my will, but yours be done. And then we would go on, verse 6. But I am a worm and not a human, scorned by others, and despised by the people, all who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. They mocked him. That is what we read at the start. They mocked him. The people looked at him. The chief priests and the scribes looked at him. They mocked him and they said, let him. If he is the king of the Jews, let his God save him. This is exactly what Psalm 22 is speaking about. We go on. 12, verse 12 onwards, 12 and 13. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving, raveling and roaring lion. They deride me. They have rejected me. They are waiting and baying for my blood. This is exactly what Jesus is experiencing as all the people waited around, as the soldiers waited around for his death. A fulfillment of Psalm 22. We read from verse 14 onwards. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. All my bones are out of its joint. Not a bone will be broken, remember the prophecy. But all my bones are out of its joints. My mouth is dried up, that is when they start giving him the vinegar to drink. The bitter thing to drink. My bone, my tongue sticks to my jaws. My mouth is dried up. Verse 16. For dogs are all around me. A company of evil doers encircle me. The thieves at the side. All the others around the scribes and the Pharisees, the Roman soldiers. I'm in now the company of evildoers. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. That is exactly what is happening at the foot of the cross. They are casting lots for his robe. Verse 24. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried him, cried to him. We would go on to read. From verse 26, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. 
Those who seek him shall, be, shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Remember what Jesus would speak about at the Eucharist. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will live forever. The sacrifice of the cross. Those who come and eat will be satisfied. Their hearts will live forever. It is the, full fulfill, it is the fulfillment of the whole prophecy. So when Jesus was reading, when Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is first and foremost for those who are deriding him. The Pharisees and the scribes over there who said, if, if he is from God, then let God save him. He has said the first words of Psalm 22. This was, this was in many ways a last chance for them to understand. Here, whatever is happening has been prophesied in Psalm 22. If only they had prayed Psalm 22 at that time, they would have understood. If only they had continued what Jesus began in Psalm 22, they would have understood what was happening. But no, it's surprising. That is why I said it's surprising they didn't pick it up. They looked and they said, he is calling Elijah. They lost the whole point. While Jesus was telling them, this is the fulfillment. No wonder the Lord said in the gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish. Rather, I have come to complete. He came to complete and that is what is happening at the cross. The completion. Taking up upon himself all the sins of mankind. And that is where we make meaning of the words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sin that was abhorred by the Father. To get rid of that sin, he would send his son. And when the son has now on the cross taken upon himself, not the sin of just one or two, but the sin of all mankind from the past, the present to the future. The filth of sin that he has taken up on his body as he hangs on that cross. The father who would abhor sin now sees his son filled with sin, completing the promise Completing the act. And the father would turn his face. His father would turn his face not from the son. But from the sin that covered his son. Dear brothers and sisters. Do we even realize the intensity of the sin we commit? That the father cannot even look at that sin. That is how much it hurts the father. That is the responsibility that he gave to his son. To carry the sins of humankind. And yet we continue and we continue and we continue in that sin like it means nothing. We feel nothing about it. We are indifferent and we are lukewarm to the sins that we commit. Without realizing at that moment the father, the son who were always together. The sins of all mankind past, present and future was there on the son. And the father who couldn't accept even one sin because of his own purity, now sees the sin of all mankind upon his son. And for that fleeting moment would turn his face away. And yet for us, it doesn't seem to matter. We are so casual about our sins. We are so lukewarm about our sins. 
there there is a story of deep love between the father and the son and the father's love for us and the son's love for us and yet we are indifferent to the sins that we commit let us open our eyes during this this period of of holy week when we look at the cross and we should keep looking at it and understand what happened on the cross and that our sins were responsible for it and let there be something within our heart that stirs that stirs us enough to pray lord i will not sin again I will not be indifferent to the sins that I'm committing. I will not be blind to it. Let us all kneel. See Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? The father who would look at his son all the time for the first time would turn his face so covered with the sins of human kind was the beloved son the darling of heaven the bridegroom now carrying the sins of all mankind how much he loved am i indifferent my sins i keep committing them again and again and so casually walk around like as though nothing has happened how much of arrogance in me how much of indifference in me father we are sorry we are sorry not only that our sins led him to the cross but we are sorry that the only time the father would take his eyes away from his beloved son was because of us the only time and my sin is connected to that moment and yet he completed the prophecy oh jesus your words father forgive them ring in my ears now when you cried out to the father my god my god why have you forsaken me when you reminded everyone there about the psalm and the prophecy and the fulfillment is taking place right in front of them they chose to be blind and deaf they wouldn't listen let me not be blind and deaf let me listen let me understand the intensity of my sin 
the things I brush aside as being little mistakes. Let me not be blind. Let me not be deaf to what I'm doing. To think that the father would turn his face away only once, only once ever. And my story is connected to that moment. Never again to sin. Give me that grace. I have been forgiven in that beautiful moment of the cross. You were forsaken so that I will have salvation. Give me the grace never to be careless about what I have received. Your forgiveness your life I'm forgiven and I'm forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well the Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. And I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were. Spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Lord Jesus, I know that I have been forgiven because you were forsaken there on the cross. Let me be so aware of the intensity and the dangers of my sin that I choose never to go down that pathway of sin but to be filled with your love the love that comes from the cross, the forgiveness that comes from the cross. I pray that I celebrate your amazing love, O oh Jesus, the love that comes from the cross, that I cherish your amazing love, the love that comes from the cross, that I celebrate your amazing love, the love that comes from the cross. I cry out, amazing love, It's my joy to honor you 
in all I do. I Open your heart and tell Jesus, you're my king. Jesus, you are my king. You are my king, Lord. I offer myself. Amazing love, I pray and celebrate. You my king that you my king would die for me amazing love I know it's true and it's my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you in all In all I do, let me honor you. Whenever I do an action, let me remember the cross. Let me remember that moment when you cried to the Father. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Let us offer up all priests at the foot of the altar, all those who live consecrated lives, that they might live it in purity and holiness. They who are supposed to be a reflection of the love, purity and holiness of Jesus might remember that responsibility and might love to live that responsibility. Prayer by St. Therese of Calcutta for priests. Mary, Mother of Jesus, throw your mantle of purity over our priests. Protect them, guide them, and keep them in your heart. Be a mother to them, especially in times of discouragement and loneliness. Love them and keep them belonging completely to Jesus. Like Jesus, they too are your sons. So keep their hearts pure and chaste. Keep their minds filled with Jesus and put Jesus always on their lips so that he is the one they offer to sinners and to all they meet. Mary, Mother of Jesus, be their mother, loving them and bringing them joy. Take special care of sick and dying priests and the ones most tempted. Remember how they spend their youth and old age, their entire lives serving and giving all to Jesus. Mary, bless them and keep a special place for them in your heart. Give them a piece of your heart so beautiful and pure and immaculate, so full of love and humility, so that they too can grow in the likeness of Christ. Dear Mary, make them humble like you and holy like Jesus. Amen. Let us receive his blessing. Down in
have given them bread from heaven Having in itself all delight Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood Help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessing the Lord reveals one person suffering from blood cancer. The Lord is touching and healing. And a person with, who has gained a lot of weight because of a medical condition and it is causing a lot of problems to the other organs of the body, the Lord is giving healing. Cover these people with the Holy Rosary. Inter the mother interceding and praying for them continuously. So cover these two sets of people with the Holy Rosary for the Lord's blessings and graces to flow. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We will now prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist. Draw me close to you Never let me go I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire 
Nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit as we celebrate this Eucharist let us continue to pray to be united with Jesus as we are preparing ourselves to go through those moments of intense intense moments of this holy week let us be more and more united with Jesus on the cross and to say with Saint Paul I'm crucified with Christ and dead to sin and I live for Christ. We offer our Lenten resolutions as it comes to the culmination of these days. Let us pray to be reminded of it and to improve our spiritual life. And let's offer all our prayer intentions at the foot of the Lord. Please pray with us for the retreats, upcoming retreats at Divine Retreat Center, the couples retreat from April 11 to 14, all those who are preparing for it with their prayer intentions, their prayer for their marriage and family. We pray, O oh Lord, have mercy upon them. We also remember the upcoming Sinhala retreat. All those who are those who are booked for that retreat and preparing for it. And today our team member Johns is celebrating his birthday. We remember him in this Eucharistic celebration a special way. For all his intentions and his family and beloved ones. Brethren, let us now recall to mind our sins, our failures, and our shortcomings. We shall ask our Heavenly Father to forgive us and to make us worthy to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our salvation. So with a contrite heart, we all pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us all. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us all. Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare my guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, your response. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, for, I, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, for a time of your great favor. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin, I have become an outcast a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. Response. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, for a time of your favor. Taunts have broken my heart. Here I am in anguish. I looked for solace, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. For food, they gave me gall. In my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Response. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, for a time of your favor. Then I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. The poor, when they see it, will be glad. And God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains. Response. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, for a time of your favor. Verse before the gospel. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus. To you, our King, you alone are compassionate with our faults. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where would you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. 
And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were all very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we enter into the intense moments of preparation for the Easter Tridom. And today we are reading about the Last Supper where Jesus is pointing out the one who is going to betray. But something in the Gospel passage today, before sitting at the Last Supper, before the arrangements made were made for the Last Supper, Judas is having a conversation Judas agrees to betray Jesus. That's how the title is given for that gospel passage, Matthew 26, verses 14 onwards. When you read the whole passage, you can just read it as a story. You can point your fingers to Judas. Judas is the one who has done all these things. But there is most intense a question. If you place yourself in the scene and read, there is that one question when Jesus declares during the supper, there is someone among you who is going to betray me. And you see how those disciples, they are responding to that question. Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? If you place yourself in that scene, not knowing who is going to do what, they do not know Peter is going to deny. They do not know they are going to run away. Not knowing what they are going to do. But when Jesus declares this, there is that question in them, is it not I, Lord? Or is it I, Lord? My dear brother, my dear sister, when we are reading this gospel passage and preparing, into the, uh, preparing for these moments of the Holy Week, especially the last part of the Holy Week, the passion, death and resurrection of the Lord. This question must be uh, disturbing within us. Someone who is eating with Jesus but has already made plans to betray Jesus. This is so lovingly Jesus. In, in Gospel of John we, we read Jesus saying, I wanted to eat this Passover with you so so intensely, so lovingly I wanted to eat this with you. So he was preparing for this moment. And he knew this was so cherished in his heart for this moment. He was waiting for this moment. But now you see someone who has already made plans to betray Jesus, yet joining the supper with Jesus. As if nothing has happened. My dear brother, my dear sister, are we also coming to the supper of the Lord with that heart? We have made our plans. We have prepared a lot of things against Jesus, to betray Jesus. And we have no plans to change. So if you look at how Judas is preparing all of it, he went all by himself and made the plan. None of the disciples knew it. Only Jesus knew it. None of the disciples know that he has made the plans to betray Jesus. And he comes down as if nothing has happened. And yet joyfully talking to Jesus. 
to the disciples mingling with them are we those are we belonging to that judas character in our life also jesus has invited for an example take jesus has invited for us in this supper the last supper or the eucharist we are celebrating how are we coming for it have we prepared our plans after receiving the lord i will go on my own way i will do what i have to do in my workplace in everything what i have to do the devised my plans to cheat devised my plans to do certain things which is not approved by the lord yet i will come to the supper of the lord recline with him eat with him joyfully and i will betray him am i coming to the celebration of the lord's supper with that heart if i am coming with that heart see the judas is within you now you need to finger you need to point your finger to yourself so today as we read this gospel passage place yourself in this scene do i have a judas within me where all the plans are made to betray jesus yet being with jesus reclining with jesus that duplicity that hypocrisy jesus addresses in this last supper but judas is not ready to change his eyes are on the th- those 30 silver coins where do i stand among the 12 along with jesus am i the judas who makes plans to betray jesus yet eating with jesus how is it possible and there is one more reflection from this gospel passage that is about jesus even when he knows judas is going to betray he is showing us the model of reconciliation extending his hand of reconciliation to judas he is reminding judas what you are going to do is not right just come back turn away if you look at your own life if you know someone is going to betray someone is going to do something against you can you be at peace with that person can you sit with that person and eat with that person can you talk to that person but here jesus shows his hand giving him one more chance to change to convert to to uh to give up what he was going to do my dear brother my dear sister so we have to look into our heart am i the judas who prepared to betray jesus at eating with jesus am i that same judas who is not ready to listen to jesus and change according to what the lord is asking me so we shall ask these two questions this day as we reflect upon this gospel passage and preparing for the uh, preparing for the uh, for the celebration of the uh, of the passion death and resurrection of our lord let us pray god our heavenly father we know there is that judas within us concerning our sinfulness we are so hypocritic a lot of duplicity within us lord in this holy week we pray to listen to your word to change our ways and move on to your way oh lord make our hearts true make our hearts right with you and lord the message of reconciliation and this week we pray give us a grace to extend our hearts extend our hands of reconciliation to our brethren against whom we have something in our heart bitterness and hatred Lord bless us as we prepare to celebrate your passion death and resurrection 
so that our hearts will overflow with your mercy and love for others we make our prayer through Christ our lord amen Brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit Archbishop, the auxiliary bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Vincent de Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we lovingly pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So let us offer each other a loving sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire earnestly to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there in my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, 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 there's just something about The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with a firm conviction that through your Son's death in time to watch the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads for the blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come that persevering in sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to, to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us serve the Lord in love and peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for priests. O, o Jesus, Jesus, eternal, eternal priest, keep, keep all your priests within the shelter of your, your sacred heart, heart where, where none may harm them. them. Keep unstained the anointed hands, which, which daily touch your sacred body. Keep unsullied their lips, purple with your precious blood. Keep pure and unearthly their hearts, sealed with the sublime marks of your glorious priesthood. Let your holy love surround them and shield them from the world's contagion. Bless their labors with abundant fruit, and may the souls to whom they have ministered to be their joy and consolation. And in heaven, their beautiful, beautiful and everlasting crown. O Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us and obtain, obtain for us many holy priests. Amen. So dear friends, uh, do continue to join us for the adoration. And um, from tomorrow, that is uh, Holy Thursday, Holy Friday, uh, Good Friday and uh, Holy Saturday, we will not have the online Mass. The adoration will be there at 6.30, but we will not have the online mass. You are expected, obviously, to be in your parishes. 
So um, the online mass will not be there till Saturday from tomorrow onwards till Saturday. Easter Sunday morning we will have the service as normal. Also a reminder that uh, our first Friday, for our first weekend services, one day retreats will be held here in the retreat center in April. 5th, 6th, and 7th. 5th, it is the first Friday devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It will be in Sinhala. The first Saturday devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary will be in Tamil. And the first Sunday devotion to the Holy Trinity will be in English. And it is also the Feast of the Divine Mercy. So please do join us as we will be having the solemn celebrations of Divine Mercy Feast here at the Retreat Center from 9 to 4 on the 7th of April. Father Gustin Valoran will be coming for that. And we'll be having our residential retreats here. The Couples Retreat uh, in English will be held from 11th to 14th. It is our first Couples Retreat, so please do join us. Encourage other couples as well who you know to attend and if uh, they are not for unavoidable circumstances, you're not able to come as a couple, your spouse cannot join you, please do come by yourself and pray for your marriage. Um, and also, uh, childless couples, please do join us. We'll have special prayers for childless couples during the retreat. So please do join us for this retreat from the 11th to the 14th. And 18th to the 20th, we'll have the Sinhala Inner Healing Retreat. Please do let your family and friends know about this. For the 1st of April, I'll be at the Church of Divine Mercy in Singapore for the Novena of um, the Divine Mercy. So please do join us for any of these retreats and continue to pray for us. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. God bless you, Father. Take me from the city to the mountain Take me from confusion to your peace Take me from my vision to your glory Take me from the river to the sea Help me climb St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.